and um, thank you very much for joining us today in this session to on uh, on the scale up of COVID nineteen vaccine delivery solutions. Today's presenters will show with us uh, some experiences on DHIS two uses and uh, implementations in some of their most complex points. Um, so, for example, planning, monitoring costing and um, and also at the same time some insights and best practices and some tips on their first-hand experience in these implementations um, just a few quick reminders um, the slides will be shared they will be uploaded in sked um, feel free to ask any question in the in the chat of this presentation um, if we have time we might answer a question or two but um, nonetheless, your questions will not be lost. They will, po will be posted in the community of practice um, and, and the links are in the description of, the, of this session. So you, the presenters will be able to share with you the answers and you can continue the discussion there. And lastly, of course, as you've seen, the, the session will be recorded and the uh, recording will be available later on. So let's get started for Rio now. And uh, okay. So um, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, since uh, 2017, um, the University of Oslo has been designated as a WHO collaboration center uh, for innovation and implementation research. And, um, and to strengthen the systems, of course, they, the WHO has approved a bunch of um, metadata packages that uh, um, the countries can freely download and install and modify according to the, their needs. Um, in particular, today we can, we're going to talk about the WHO approved DHIS2 immunization toolkit, which ranges uh, from um, the routine EPI module, both in a tracker and, uh, and uh, aggregated uh, form. And of course, um, what we can call somehow mass campaigns or any kind of supplementary um, vaccination activities that you might need to roll out. In this case, for example, it was the, the COVID-19 um, delivery strategies. Um, we have also come up with uh, some logistics data modules um, for stock management and cold chain management. And um, um, of course, the adverse events for a following immunization, which has scaled up in implementation greatly since the uh, COVID-19 uh, immunization activities have started. And lastly, of course, uh, you're also gonna hear about this in the presentation, some electronic health certificate that have been integrated uh, for the production of vaccination cards together with the electronic immunization register for COVID. So um, just to give you an idea on the uptake of these packages, um, nowadays we have um, up to 45 countries that with the that general API um, immunization data, 30 uh, countries have already installed the API package and um, 25 are already operational and fully collecting their, uh, the data on their um, COVID-19 vaccination activities fully in, um, in DHIS2. And we have still eight under development, but they will uh, be operational soon. So today presentations, today presentation are incredibly interesting and uh, I might be slightly biased, but I really hope you can enjoy them as much as I did. Um, we have Dr. Pamod from his, uh, Sri Lanka that is gonna tell us more about the challenges um, with the large scale implementation of, uh, of um, the COVID tracker. And, um, and he's also gonna give some recommendation and best practices in order to overcome these challenges. Um, then we're going to have uh, Prof Professor Achala, um, who is uh, a consultant, an HMS consultant for the WHO at the moment, um, who is going to um, show us some good examples of integrations of multiple components of the immunization toolkit. And uh, he's going to show us um, how the, the supervision and the daily reporting have also been like strengthening the local national system. And finally, Adolf from uh, his Rwanda. Um, who is going to give us uh, an overview on how the Hisperanda has fully remotely supported a huge scale implementation 
of the COVID um, delivery toolkit in, in Madagascar. So without further ado, because of course we don't have a lot of time, unfortunately, but I leave the floor to Dr. Pamot. Thank you. Victoria. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Let me share my screen. So in 19 minutes, what I hope to discuss is uh, how we use DHS2 for COVID vaccination in Sri Lanka and uh, what are the lessons learned and the best practices uh, other countries can use when you are implementing COVID vaccination uh, on DHS2 platforms. So a uh, little bit of background about uh, what happened in Sri Lanka, as uh, some of you may be aware that Sri Lanka was one of the first countries to start using DHS2 for COVID immunization, uh, for COVID information management. As you can see here, from January to April 2020, that is around uh, at the end of the pandemic, we were able to develop uh, more than eight modules to serve the requirements around with uh, information on top of DHS, all this information modules in place uh, for COVID uh, surveillance on DHS2 platform. Uh, towards the latter part of last year, what we embarked on was to uh, customize DHS2 for, uh, for collecting information around uh, COVID immunization. So the work uh, was initially started with, uh, of course, the pioneers by uh, uh, the WHO country office in uh, late October 2020. And the work that was started that time is still ongoing. And we have been able to get uh, this uh, system operational uh, with entire popul adult population registered. Right, so a little bit of history. Uh, uh, as you are aware, like uh, uh, there were a couple of vaccines that uh, received approval for emergency use uh, towards the latter part of last year. And Sri Lanka, within one week of receiving approval uh, and recommendation by WHO at, uh, towards the last, uh, the latter part of uh, uh, January, 2021, we started COVID-19 vaccination and uh, by the time we started our vaccination, our information system was ready on DHS2 platform to collect uh, COVID vaccine related information. Right. So let me quickly summarize uh, the ecosystem of modules that we have in the surveillance system. So as I highlighted before, we have all these modules to collect uh, different uh, information components uh, for COVID, uh, COVID related requirements. And the newest addition was of course, uh, the immunization portal. Uh, which again has several other components, which I will explain in, uh, explain later. So basically, Sri Lanka was the uh, first country to deploy COVID immunization package uh, on top of DHS2 platform. And there were like mainly four components. First thing is the immunization tracker to collect the individual data. And then uh, we had the aggregate stock monitoring component and a digital vaccination certificate and also citizen portal. That is, that is another, I mean, it's an outside module which is connected to DHS2 to uh, schedule appointments, vaccination appointments. So these are the four components that we have in uh, COVID vaccination or COVID immunization package. Right, so uh, the aggregate component is mainly targeting, as I mentioned before, the stock monitoring where the stock information is captured at national, regional, uh, that is at district level and the vaccination center level. And uh, we also have aggregate vaccine data reporting, like, I mean, it's about how many vaccines were received and uh, how many were, uh, were injected, uh, which is reported from vaccination centers in addition to the tracker. And the case-based component, of course, has three, three modules, uh, uh, three main sections. First thing is about uh, COVID vaccination information. That is about the first and second dose of uh, the currently injected vaccines. And the uh, adverse events following immunization uh, module was there. And also the latest one is we, uh, we have started, the country has started uh, immunizing, immunizing the pregnant mothers. So we capture that information in a, in, as a separate module because it's a kind of a cohort follow-up that happens, uh, which even lasts uh, even after the delivery. 
And of course, the analytic components, uh, the, the standard analytics that we are generally use in DHS to our there, that is like we have uh, different charts, maps, and everything on uh, the usual analytics, which of course uh, are embedded into the DHS2 dashboards. And in addition, for the line list and reporting purposes, we have also instructed uh, the vaccination centers to keep Excel line lists. And in addition, there are a few analytics which, uh, of course, like, for example, uh, number of uh, events that were entered today. I mean, so that kind of uh, information is currently not possible to directly obtain from DHIS2, the existing tools. So for these ones, we are using SQL waves. Uh, and our technical approach uh, has been like this. So we had a couple of broader requirements. The first thing is to have an electronic immunization registry for COVID-19 and pre-registration of the entire adult population of Sri Lanka and to provide real-time analytics in uh, means of uh, dashboards to all the stakeholders at district and national level and to produce the digital immunization certificate. So there were like main uh, uh, challenges that we really didn't know initially how to address. So a few of them are uh, how to pre-populate the uh, 16 million track entity instances. So this 16 million number is the entire adult population of uh, Sri Lanka, which was of course made available to us by the electoral database. So we had the entire list of uh, adult population, uh, which was readily available, but how to get it into, into DHIS2. And then again, providing real-time analytics in this, this kind of a large scale tracker implementation and to produce uh, vaccination certificates. So, uh, let's see how we uh, address these, these three main challenges. So uh, uh, the challenge about how to import the 16 million track entity instances, uh, well, it was never easy. We kind of uh, try, um, experimented uh, using few methods. So our first approach was to push uh, this information from the CSV file uh, to the DHS2 instance using the web API. And as you can see here, these are some statistics, like we did some uh, stress testing and some, uh, uh, I mean, kind of experimenting around how many uh, concurrent requests have to be sent and all. But unfortunately, what happened was it was not predictable. So it was giving us uh, uh, figures like it will take around 40 days initially. And when we tried to optimize, it was give, uh, telling us this would take 16 days to uh, Im uh, import the entire database into the DHS2. Uh, so this was not working, like we didn't have that much time. So this is when we uh, uh, we explored the support of University of Oslo as well as the regional HISPUB. So for example, um, uh, his, his Vietnam, who had done uh, some work around it before, we contacted them and uh, we, we discussed like what would be the best approach. And this is when we, uh, when we decided that we would go ahead with the SQL insertion approach. So what we basically did was we, we tried to directly uh, import the data into the DHS2 database, which is kind of a risky procedure, so which required a lot of testing. But basically, it involved finally seven steps. The first thing is to map the, uh, map the organization units, then to filter out any invalid entries. And age, of course, it's a, it's a very custom requirement we had. We had to calculate that. And then we uh, imported the track entity instances first, then the attributes, then enrollments. So the script that we utilize uh, to do this is available in GitHub. So uh Paman, we can't hear you very well now the it, it seems like the internet is lagging so we couldn't hear about the last last minute of it Thanks. it's kind of
I'm, I'm going to share my screen and you, you stick with the audio, okay? Do you see my screen? It seems like we lost Pamot. <laughs> okay, I see. He's been having some problems with the internet today. Um, we can uh, we can uh, we can recover Pamod in a in a bit, and uh, I'm going to try to like talk to him on the side. The beauty of uh, of live sharing, but um, um, Achala, if in the meantime you want to get started, and uh, and maybe if we manage, we can resume with uh, with Pamod. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Victoria. Can I start? Yes, please. The floor is yours. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I'm Achala Jayatilak from Timor Leste. I'm going to discuss how we customized and implemented COVID immunization tracker in Timor Leste. Uh, let's, let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Perfectly. Hello. Yes, perfectly. Yeah, okay. okay, thank you. Okay, let me start. For those who are not much familiar with Timor Leste, it's uh, quite a new country located in Southeast Asia. Uh, it's an island country with an area of 15,000 square kilometers and roughly 1.3 million population. There are 13 districts or municipalities in the country and there are 71 community health centers or CHCs and five referral hospitals, one national hospital. And at the grassroots level, there are 330 health posts all over the country. Although it's a new country, which got its independence in 1999, in 2013, Timor Leste has decided to implement its national HMIS based on DHIS2. It is called Timor Leste Health Information System, also known as, known as TLHIS. TLHIS was mainly established to enter aggregated data from community health centers. Paper based forms are collected at health post level and entered into the system at community health center level. TLHIS was fully implemented in 2017, covering the entire country. This year, in 2021, with the launch of COVID-19 immunization track campaign, DHIS2 tracker was introduced to uh, Timor Leste. So before we move moving on to the details of the immunization tracker, let's start, let's have a look at the situation of COVID-19 cases in Timor Leste. Until end of December 2020, Timor Leste had only few cases and no deaths, it's like around 30 cases. Among the reported cases also, the majority was asymptomatic. However, cases started to increase from early this year and the government negotiated with partners to get vaccine doses for Timor Leste population. Finally, COVAX facility agreed to send first consignment of allocated 20% in the first week of April. Then immunization team started developing the deployment plan and explored the options for managing immunization data. Then decided to use TLHIS for that purpose. It was quite challenging as we had only few weeks remaining to receive the vaccine. By then, WHO Sri Lanka country office with the help of his Sri Lanka has customized the DHIS2 instance to capture immunization data in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka. So in Sri Lanka, Vaccination started in February. So using the same metadata and their help, we customized the, an instance of DHIS2 for Timor Leste to capture COVID-19 immunization data. COVID-19 vaccination was launched in Timor Leste on 7th April 2021 on the World Health Day together with immunization tracker. 
TLHI as immunization tracker was officially launched by His Excellency the Prime Minister of Timor Leste and the President of the Parliament of Timor Leste on 7th uh, April. This is the overall workflow of the immunization tracker. All vaccinations are happening at the vaccination uh, posts. Uh, vaccination posts are operated from community health centers or CHCs or hospitals. Uh, here you can see reporting and feedback uh, flows. Let, let me uh, show you uh, this with more details. So we get uh, vaccine stocks to main vaccine store at the Ministry of Health from abroad and then distributed to the districts. From the district drug stores, vaccines are distributed to hospitals, community health centers, and health posts where there are refrigerators. From there, they daily issue vaccines to a vaccination post. Vaccination happens at the vaccination post, and after vaccination, they prepare two main forms a line list of people who were vaccinated on that particular day, and an aggregated daily return for the vaccination post. In Maine, uh, many vaccination posts in remote areas, so they be, don't have enough staff, equipment, or internet to enter data. Therefore, paper forms are sent to uh, either community uh, health center or uh, hospitals. At hospitals, community health centers, and municipal health offices, there are, there are dedicated staff to enter data. They have computers and internet connection. In case if they have any issues uh, with data entry at community health center level, the forms sent to the upper level, that is uh, municipal or national by WhatsApp or Viber. So this is the data entry screen of the tracker capture, more or less similar to what Pamod showed you. So as you all are anyway familiar with DHS2 tracker capture, I'm not going into uh, details. So this is the aggregated data entry form. So in addition to individual data, vaccination post daily re return, vaccination post daily return is the main aggregated form. And using that total number vaccinated is entered into the system by vaccination product because we have we are using currently two different uh, products, uh, AstraZeneca and uh, Sinovac, and the doses along with AEFI, if any. So which enabled us to monitor the vaccine and, and other than that, uh, we enter uh, vaccine stock movements also to the system. So that enables us to uh, uh, regularly monitor the vaccine stock in the country. So other than tracker capture and aggregated data entry, we use event capture for supervision and monitoring uh, to enter supervision and monitoring reports. So this is uh, one of the dashboards. Again, I'm not going into details as you all are familiar with DHIS2 uh, dashboards. So before launching the system, we conducted uh, island-wide training within a month. So several one-page documents uh, or quick user guides or quick reference guides were prepared, especially in local language and distributed among the users. Although we managed to launch the tracker successfully, it was not an easy journey. We had to face many challenges. Main challenge we faced is the lack of uh, human resource or lack of trained staff. Although there was a staff who were trained to enter aggregated data, they didn't have any experience in entering individual data. So I had to train them intensively over a period, a very short time period. And uh, due to the travel restrictions, I didn't have the luxury of getting more of these trainers or resources from abroad. And unfortunately, locally, there are no trainers available. Lack of internet connectivity and lack of devices were other challenges. Some users still use their personal mobile phones and data for this purpose. Fortunately, we had some tablets 
but for a different purpose, and we managed to use them uh, for the vaccination campaign. Speed of the internet connection and location of the server even matter. For example, at the beginning, during the training period, we were using a server located in, in Europe. But later, we changed it to uh, Singapore and to, to improve the, the speed and accessibility. As I mentioned before, we entered aggregated data by vaccination post. So vaccination posts are not permanent org units. So it was planned at the beginning to prepare a list of all the vaccination posts at the beginning. But due to the, the dynamic nature of the campaign, uh, uh, we couldn't do it. So I have to create new org units, that is the vaccination post, almost every day. Uh, that is challenging because they start data entry after completion, the vaccination, that is usually after 4 or 5 p.m. And they request us to create vaccination post even around midnight. And uh, although we plan to uh, bulk register individuals to the tracker, uh, due to the incompleteness of data, we couldn't do it. So then we had to uh, enumerate the population prior to, to the vaccination campaign. Although it is not directly related to the information system, another challenge was lack of information about vaccine arrival and other related information. Although it was very challenging, we have achieved a lot. We managed to roll out the, the tracker at nationally with the launch of vaccines. National daily reports are generated from the system every day at 10 a.m. and released to the relevant authorities and media. We managed to train HMIA staff in the entire country within a month. So enumeration of population. So although data was not complete, at the beginning we managed to enumerate eligible population at household level. And uh, the TLHIS immunization tracker can uh, generate uh, smart vaccination certificate. This is based on WHO recommendations. Uh, however, uh, it was not uh, officially implemented yet. So these are the references we used in this project. And uh, that is all I have today. Before concluding, I should say that Timor Leste is a very beautiful country. And after COVID-19 uh, pandemic is over, I invite all of you to visit if you get a chance. Thank you. Obrigado. Thank you, Chala. And I would definitely like uh, putting myself as the first one to, to come over and, uh, and visit. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It's uh, it's always beautiful to see all the things that can be done with, uh, with the system and how you guys implemented it over there. Despite everything, it's it's almost inspiring. Um, thank you so much. I saw before that uh, Pamo tried to reconnect, but then he dropped off again. So I'm trying to catch up with him on the side. So Adolf, if you want to go ahead um, and uh, and start presenting already, and uh, and then in time I'm start I'm continuing to catch up with uh, Pamo on the side. Thank That's you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to some of us. Uh, I hope you all see my screen. Uh, yes, we do, go ahead. Yes, so my, my presentation uh, is going to share with you the experience of uh, his Rwanda together with the ministry, together with the government of Madagascar and partners, our journey while trying to, to put in place a system to support the COVID-19 vaccination uh, service delivery to 
uh, of course, to Malagasy people. Uh, so as you can read from the first slide, uh, uh, the University of Oslo and the collaboration with WHO and other experts have uh, elaborated a, a DHS-based COVID vaccine delivery toolkit uh, that comprises of vaccination registry and also with a, a module uh, help to track the adverse event following the immunization and also with the aggregate part of uh, helping you to uh, capture and report daily reports on uh, COVID-19 vac COVID vaccines distribution across uh, the country. So uh, this PowerPoint, this presentation is going to uh, share with you uh, how we, what we did and how we, uh, we managed to scale up this package uh, at the countrywide and share with you the involvement and, uh, and input from different actors uh, while implementing this package. As an overview, uh, Madagascar is one of the African country. Uh, as you can see from uh, this map from World Map, it's uh, it's actually a very big country in the in the Indian Oceans um, of the uh, uh, in, in in if I can say in the east part of Africa. So. Uh, it has uh, over than 27 million of population, 22 regions, and 140 uh, uh, districts. So uh, while trying to put in place uh, to support the, go the government uh, uh, plans to start vaccinating population in Madagascar, uh, his Rwanda as the 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 partner normally supporting uh, countries implementing DHIS in the eastern part of Africa and Central Africa, with French and English speaking countries, uh, in, in our normal collaboration with the uh, country, uh, WHO country office and uh, the Ministry of Health and the Department of Information Systems and the uh, program for uh, extended program for immunization. We uh, sat together to see how best we can uh, elaborate, how can best we can uh, customize or adapt this globally developed package to respond to Madagascar needs. So we started by putting in place a coordination team made by, of course, made by the president's office uh, unit in charge of digitization in collaboration, of, or in collaboration also with the Minister of Health, WHO country office and his technical people to uh, to to see what are the mechanisms, what are the requirements, what are uh, what are in terms of infrastructures, in terms of human resources, in terms of uh, tools to be put, to be uh, for this uh, package to be rolled out country. So during this COVID nineteen uh, period, as you understand, it's, it wasn't really uh, quite easy for some of. Uh, as who are supposed to provide technical assistance to country team. So, uh, but we remotely managed to work with the, with the, the in-country stakeholders to, to make sure that the package is, is uh, readapted to respond to government's needs to target to, to 238,000 uh, two, population of uh, over 18 uh, age. Uh, by then the country has already received over 250,000 dose, doses for, for, for this uh, service. So despite the very limited time we had, so we try to uh, uh, collaborate and uh, of course, uh, 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 partnering with different MOH and the government partners uh, 297 tablets were uh, available to support this initiative because uh, Madagascar, uh, the internet coverage is not so big and looking at the vaccination services, uh, the, uh, the service was not ma mainly supposed to be offered 
into the existing health facilities rather than having ad hoc vaccination sites uh, to make sure that the targeted population are all, uh, uh, are all reached. Uh, also, uh, by then, the government has also thought having uh, using a pre registration uh, tool. This is a digital solution that has been developed by the, the government to make sure that whoever is in the targeted population is pre registered so that at every vaccination point, uh, the, the, the officers at the site, they, they really know how many people are, 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 are being expected to come for that service in a very specific uh, site. So as I mentioned, so the vaccination or the planning started this year, April, and one of the approach implementing or adopting this package, as I said, was to make sure that everybody, everybody targeted is pre-registered in the national census system. And this system was later on interoperated with a DHIS instance that holds this, uh, this COVID-19 vaccination toolkit. Uh, uh, so, so for your information in Madagascar, so they have opted to, to take the package and use it for registration of, of uh, people vaccinated and also be able to track those who who got the adverse event following immunization and also on daily basis report the stock of vaccines uh, administered to the, the population. So one of the, uh, the other strategy we use to make sure that we are adapting and also uh, comply with the, the tight deadlines was to use a WhatsApp group for, for feedback and technical assistance. So as uh, you can it so Rwanda and Madagascar they are two different countries so and technical assistance was mainly supposed to come from our technical people who are not able to travel to to, to Madagascar uh, for COVID restrictions so through the WhatsApp group we we remotely uh, exchanged and had a number of consultation meetings and provide and be able and provided all guidance and remotely configured servers for, for this uh, package and also uh, in collaboration with the, the, uh, the country, uh, the, the HMIS team, we set up servers to, we set up servers, we configured users. And as I said, since most of the vaccination were not supposed to have to happen in the existing premises, so we had also to create ad hoc sites. So this also has been through the mentorship and the capacity building sessions with the country team. Uh, we, we, we regularly updated the organizational unit of the system to make sure that every new vaccination site is, is created into the system and responsible uh, vaccination officers and data collectors are assigned to the, to uh, to the site. Uh, what I can also mention here, the big, uh, this implementation really depends uh, on the use of tablets. So computers were quite few uh, and based in the health facility, existing health facilities. So as you understand at the vaccination point, they only relied on the, on the, on the use of tablets uh, because they are more portable, they are the battery, uh, the power for the power, so you don't complain on the power issues. Uh, that was also the beauty of using tablet in this uh, implementation. Of course, the, the 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 other strategy we used to put in place this package is to was to have a joint uh, national DHS team, including, as I said, multiple stakeholders. Uh, and what I can here recommend is the, uh, the government uh, commitment to make sure that a digital solution is put in place to, to support and the, the vaccination service delivery and to be sure that every person registered um, is, va is vaccinated and the service and whether antigen, adverse event, everything is directly recorded uh, into the, the, the system. 
So in this implementation, you combine the use, uh, as in most of our, uh, many developing countries, you combine the use of uh, web channels, tablets, and also paper forms, whereby uh, it wasn't really possible to, uh, to have uh, whether a, a tablet or uh, a computer. So as I mentioned, the other tool that uh, 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 supported this implementation is among of those, the, at every vaccination uh, site, the, there is a vaccination registry to make sure that if there is any technical problems with the tool, uh, people can get vaccinated and got registered into the registers, they have vaccination cards, and of course use their, uh, their reporting uh, forms to as a mitigation plan to when the, there is a co an issue with the technologies. So on this image, you can, this is one, uh, like a picture of the vaccination card that, that is being used to, uh, to, to record information on the first dose received and the second dose received. This is of course was uh, in a sense that for the maximum dose for, 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 for people is uh, are two doses. Uh, so the, the key points of success in this implementation that may, may I can share with, the, with you here present. Of course, uh, the DHIS uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID vaccination toolkit, it's a ready to use toolkit that has been reviewed uh, with, uh, with indicators, with charts, with maps, with uh, every uh, uh, features that any country may require to, or starting from data entry interfaces up to information use uh, uh, features. So this uh, was one of the uh, uh, factors that helped us to, uh, to, to achieve the success. Also the country, uh, the government ownership and the country team ownership. So the, this, the implementation of this package has been uh, enforced by the ministry guidelines to make sure that every uh, vaccinated person is registered in the chest tracker. Whether the vaccination is not uh, done, maybe based on different uh, uh, circumstances, that those person can ha have to be uh, uh, recorded uh, after receiving the service. So it means at the end of the day, the in charge of uh, vaccination sites, they have to see uh, to compare case reported into DHIS and case recorded and registers to make sure that numbers are, are matching. Of course, the, this, the third point of, success, point of success for us is uh, having uh, a daily uh, high level meeting to discuss the implementation issues, as you understand. Uh, uh, during this uh, COVID era, so the, the, there are a lot of circumstances, whether internet issues, transportation, uh, and so forth. So that has uh, uh, can a little bit ca can affect the smooth uh, progress of the any activity. So we had to sit on daily basis and uh, share the feedback. But for some of us, this has been followed up remotely, making sure that whether a technical part of or the issues shared are, are, are addressed remotely. Of course, uh, uh, we had also. Uh, if I can say a small team of technical people in charge of digitalization who on daily basis on every time uh, look at the feedback shared on the WhatsApp groups to make sure that any user feedback, any user constraints are timely addressed. Of course, the, the, the last key point of success uh, is uh, we have actually building on the existing experience uh, using the HIS that uh, the country, because the country has been using the HIS for, uh, for a while. Of course, even though we are talking about success, of course we made some, some challenges and we try to, uh, to come up with some solutions. Mainly, uh, uh, in some, as, you under, as you may know, in some countries adopted, or ad adopted the COVAX initiative a little bit late. Uh, and this also, as you understand, uh, gave us a very little time to, 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 as a technical team, to readapt the tool 
uh, do configuration, server configuration, and so forth. Uh, we, uh, the second challenge is uh, the limited time, as I said, the limited time to do preparations and train people. Uh, of course, funding gaps are always, but also we have also faced the same ones. Still, uh, as you understood, we, what using tablets means the tablet has to be connected. So they have to be have to have internet credits to make sure that at the end of the day or on on uh, on a given set time, tablets synchronize with the central server to make sure that any uh, information that are captured on tablets are automatically synchronized with the central system. Of course, uh, starting the vaccination, uh, we, as I, we didn't have much resources in terms of tablets and in terms of computers. So that also was another challenge. And of course, as uh, uh, the previous presenter uh, shared it, there's also a skills gap in terms of people using uh, uh, DHIS and tablets, uh, especially on some or basic troubleshooting skills that for, for every user who is using tablets has to consider before going to the field, especially when it comes to when you are going to, there are quite updates that might happen to the central system. And if you don't synchronize with the national, with the system before you go to the field, it may uh, create conflicts and you fail to synchronize, especially when you have photos and uh, multiple cases. Of course, we have also faced some delays in, in the registration with regards to visas vaccination. As I, may, I previously mentioned, people were supposed to be pre-registered into the government census system. And that census system automatically pushes every registered person to, to the DHIS instead so that a person comes at the vaccination site already, the demographic information already pre-registered and the vaccination officer simply records information regarding uh, the vaccination, the antigens, the uh, and so forth. So, so there, there we face some delays with regard to those. So trying to address to those number of solutions has, has been uh, thought of. Uh, so we we have developed guidelines to address capacity gap, capacity gap challenges uh, using WhatsApp to exchange knowledge and uh, taking some basic troubleshooting skills. And of course, uh, the government uh, managed to convince partners to cover some part of the internet battles to ensure that the synchronization of vaccination people uh, is being done and the costs are being generated. Of course, uh, on the field, because uh, it happens so fast, so in the fields, uh, partners, including the WHO consultants, has been helping the, uh, the government people to make sure that on sites, uh, whether recording cases or whether uh, supporting in terms of logistics, uh, using of tablets, building capacity, uh, and so forth. The, the, the last, and not the least, is the high commitment and the ownership of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, government staff that we try to build in them so that, because even though we are a, a little bit supporting remotely, so we, we, we wanted them to have to own the process make sure that every user, every uh, actors, data collectors on the field, uh, any, uh, because you know, waiting that the issue is reported on WhatsApp, it was, might be a little bit uh, uh, slow, um, a little bit slow the process. So we build into the government, the in-country team, the uh, ownership and commitment to make sure that they, they are equipped with enough squares and, uh, and uh, a will to support uh, field officers. Yeah, even though we managed to come up with uh, some solutions, of course, there are some persistent challenges that uh, uh, the current implementation is still facing, especially uh, when uh, uh, trying to implement a mobile and advanced strategies. Uh, so there is still a, a lack of uh, enough resources and uh, planning to make sure that any uh, mobile or advanced strategies that are being carried out they are well coordinated and also enough resources available for to support the, the activity. Uh, the, this, the, the second challenge is uh, we need to keep on monitoring because as I said, 
Uh, with the technology, there might be people who can be registered on papers and wait to be, uh, maybe at the end of the day, to be captured in the system. So there's still that, uh, this uh, uh, slowness uh, for site coordinators to, to capture on re regularly uh, uh, people recorded on papers. And also uh, that this can contribute to data quality issues, especially where if we, we are supposed to generate daily reports or weekly reports on how many people have been vaccinated, how many uh, the vaccines have been distributed and so forth. Uh, there is also uh, still reluctancy to change uh, from different uh, users. Of course, if people have been using used to use papers, and uh, now we are bringing in tablets, we are bringing in technology solutions. So, of course, there are, uh, there, are, there, are, there are still those challenges. But uh, progressively, we hope these are going to be resolved. So the, 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 the other challenge that is still there is uh, to, to the, the remote capacity building. As you understand, uh, the technical assistance is mainly uh, provided to country team on remotely, even though oh, we can easily access the servers, troubleshoot servers, um, reconfigure uh, or update servers or do any technical troubleshooting, but this is being done remotely. Uh, so. So it's still a challenge, but we are trying to work, have different workarounds to make sure that the system is always online too and ready to serve. So in Madagascar, Madagascar is a French speaking country. And uh, of course, so we have to implement uh, uh, the French version, which still have some uh, bugs and system limitations that are not yet, uh, uh, not yet uh, fixed. This one uh, mainly is in the area of uh, data use, whereby see there are still some bugs to download pivot tables uh, to if they, are, they have to do analysis uh, on um, uh, in Excel. But the, this part that the system is 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 able to support and and uh, 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 help to record on daily basis vaccination cases and also uh, generate reports and uh, system outputs. The current status of the system, as for the first batch of this, uh, uh, of Adolf, this uh, I need you to, to start wrapping up soon because we need to leave the room for the next session soon. Yes, please. So uh, at the current status, so we have completed the, the first batch of vaccination this June. And of course, we are now, uh, the country is now busy trying to make sure that every case recorded on papers is directly captured in the system. And every uh, case that are not synced with the central server are synced to make sure that the quality issues, data quality issues is addressed. And also uh, try to see how can improve the ISO management as we are aiming to a more wider uh, vaccination uh, campaign. So that's what I have to share with you. I can't end without acknowledging uh, a different individuals efforts starting from the global uh, community uh, that helped us to develop this toolkit that we based, we started and customize it. The University of Oslo, his community, the Ministry of Health of Madagascar and different departments in the ministry. And of course, uh, the partners uh, of the Ministry of Health in Madagascar. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I think the the, the, you can share your questions and uh, comments on the community of practice. And I think the link of this uh, presentation will be shared with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adolf. Super interesting as usual. Um, <clears throat> it's a pity that Pamoda got disconnected and such, but uh, um, probably we will be able to provide a, a recording of his, uh, um, of his uh, presentation later on. We need to drop off because uh, the next session will start soon. I thank you all for your presence and participation. And, um, and yes, I hope uh, you enjoyed just as much and uh, you found uh, uh, some useful points uh, for, for your own implementation or just in general, uh, some interesting points on the HIS too.